beat detective. So the more detail is probably a better way to describe this. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the important factors. So we did this first little section very quickly in the in the fast video, and now we're going to start having a look at um, issues that happen. The first thing we notice is that at the end of that point there, this section. Uh, this kick drum is early. Now this is a common problem uh, when beat detectiving drums is that the drummer is going to be quite often early, ahead of time. Um, out of time is another way to say it and I can say it in this situation because once again it's me. So I'm going to select this all of the audio for the drums here and I'm going to begin by preparing and dragging this track. I'm going to begin by preparing and dragging this track onto the click. Um, with the kick drum, the transient of the kick drum sitting right on that particular grid point there. So what it's doing is it's sort of, it's actually going to be bringing everything closer to the grid anyways, but it means that our first hit of this section is right on the grid. It means that we can move on confidently in our next sections. Now, I, I advise when starting to use Beat Detective that you, you just do small sections at a time, and those sections can quite often relate to what's being played on the drum kit. So here, this is all mostly kick drum parts with the occasional snare drum hit and a crash, and, and the snare drum doesn't actually kick into there. So I would look at this section here as, as you know, a style, a style of beat detective where we're mostly going to be recognizing our transients from the kick drum. And if we do want to go to the hi-hats, sure we can. That would be chopping up all the 16th notes. That's a lot more effort. Um, depending on the drum are not always necessary. So if we go in here and we have a quick look at these first bunch of bars, I'm going to chop up this section here by tabbing to transient up up towards the the big end of a section here now that crash is the beginning of the next bar so i'm going to chop here on that transient and i'm going to trim back so that this particular section here is exactly a, a set amount of time and at the moment what we have here is uh just under four bars so i might even actually drag this back here and chop up to that so it's a nice even four bars get that sitting right on the grid go to the other end of there, really make sure that I have exactly four bars in my selection there. The selection um, is important to match with your Beat Detective. So we have that ready to go. I'm going to Command-8 to bring up Beat Detective, Command-8 on your numeric keypad, obviously, um, and capture, capture Selection. Now, this particular button captures what you have selected up in Pro Tools and makes it work down here. Now, if, if these particular numbers don't match Beat Detective and the selection, you sometimes have to, it's a bit of a glitch, you could say, have to reselect the area. So I do it with my arrows and shift and click and reselect and make sure that this matches exactly. If we have that issue today, I'll be happy to show you it because it's quite annoying. So we have the selection here, uh, four bars long. We, we've captured it. And then what we do is analyze. Now we can't analyze while we have the whole drum kit selected because it's going to analyze every single transient on all of those parts. We only want to analyze the, the main elements of what's being played. And more importantly, we want to analyze the close microphones. So the microphone that's closest to the source that we're, we're actually trying to analyze. So in this case, we've only got one kick drum mic. If there was a kick in and a kick out, we would choose the kick in because it's closest to the actual event that's happening. If you're um, analyzing a snare drum and you've got a snare top and a snare bottom, you would analyze the snare top because it's closest to where the stick actually hits the drum. So um, with my Groupon, is, is, there's different ways to manage this and I usually like having the Groupon and what I do is I either shift select or I option select or do something so that I can make my selection only go on the track that I want so that I can analyze it correctly. Now, if you have your uh, link track and edit selection button set, that means that if I now move my selection down to other tracks, it matches what the actual uh, nameplate is selecting. So it makes it easy to be able to go, okay, here's all my drum tracks for this section and here now is just the kick track. So I can analyze that particular part, um, make sure that um, if you use your zoom toggle, you can check that you've got the right amount of things going on. So if I drag this right up, I'm not going to even get any other artifacts. But I need purple hits on all of my strong transients there. I'm happy. I can shift down and go and, and beat detective this next section. Uh, so we've analyzed it. We separate all of that. We clip conform. This is the fast bit, the easy bit. And we go to fill and crossfade. Okay, now that's done all of that. The common issue is that whatever selection area you did, 
the, the join between this and the last section is not going to always work out properly for you. So you just go in there and I use clutching by holding command and dragging, trimming back here a bit and I'm getting my crossfade to finish just before that starts. Nice and neat to make sure that all works. So let's, um, I'll put a marker in here so we know where that point was and let's have a listen from previous Beat Detective to this Beat Detective. Good. Now, our next little section here is, is already a little bit out, so we could um, continue on and do this. Let's see how quickly we can do this section. I'm going to delete that fade, trim this back, see what we have. Beautiful. I'm going to tab up to... Uh, oh, I lost that. Let's go back. Where are we here? Okay. So, I'm going to trim this back a little bit, tab up to that transient, grab this section um, of drums here and drag it right onto the click. Make sure I've got all the stuff selected for this track. When I do that particular point, that bit, drag it all back on. Now, the issue I just had there where it didn't all move together is because there's edits later on in this track that happened. Sometimes I find it a good way to start Beat Detective by uh, going through and actually chopping up all these different sections of the song before I even start. So I'll go through and to get that section chopped up, get this section chopped up here. There's obviously a different part. Yep, different style of groove there. So let's chop that up and use these as different sections. That means when you drag them around and put them on a grid, you're not going to have to worry too much um, about messing with the second half of the song. If there's no edits later on, then you'll be fine. So that's right on. Let's see how if we let's see if we can try to do this entire section here all in one go. So clip selection, we have a little bit off on our selection here, so we need to zoom in and work out why. It's right on the start there, but the end of our selection is not perfect. So I'm going to shift select there. I'm even going to chop it so that it's a nice even selection that goes for 40 bars. Um, capture the selection there. 106, 146, 106, 146. Perfect. All right. I'm going to make sure that I only have the kick drum selected. It's the main thing that's being played here. Uh, there we go. Analyze that. It's going to take a bit longer because there's a bigger section. We can zoom in and you can even scroll through the actual hits here by using the scroll next button or scrolling through like this, making sure you don't have any extra transients being detected. And bingo. It's all looking pretty good. So let's go down here, uh, separate out all of that stuff. Take a bit longer. We're doing 40 bars all at the same time. That's a lot of edits. Click conform. Edit smoothing. I often put a marker in here to, to once again point out where the, the next section I did started so I can go in and make sure this little edit here is perfect. What we should have is a pretty good... Alright, now, as a bit of an example, I'm going to have a look at the idea of trying to quantize a section of this um, drumming here where we do the actual 16th notes as well. So we're going to have a look at the hi-hats here. Now those ones are all a bit sloppy. So let's go back to a section here where we have the playing that's going to be... I'll put a marker in there and a marker in there. We're going to make this section. We're going to try to see what it's like to actually do the hi-hats as well. So we have almost four bars selected exactly because of this little point here. So let's just chop right there. Go to the end of this selection here. Chop this one as well. Let's just get rid of that fade is the easiest way to do that. So now we have an exactly four bar selection here. And we're going to beat detective this with the hi-hats as well. So back to clip separation capture. So we have right on beat ones this particular time. We're going to get the kick, but we're also going to get the hi-hats. So when we when we do this particular section of um, zoom toggled in there, we can see the hi-hats now. So if I start, if I make sure that we're on 16th for our everything, I can now start dragging this across and I'm going to start picking up all these extra notes. Let's try 30 seconds. Oh, got to analyze it, don't I? Yeah, here we go. So 
starting to see all these extra little sections pop up. So this is now going to quantize all of the drums in, in this uh, much more detail, you could say. So we have the kick drum and the hi-hat selected. If I do shift and up or down with my track selector here, I'm going to end up getting all of the drums selected. I can then separate those. Clip conform. Edit smoothing. And this is where we might start seeing some more of the issues come up, but let's have a look, right? Okay, so we can hear a nice little problem in there where what we have is the hi-hat is hitting after the kick drum and we quite simply have a bit of a artifact showing up here. Now, this problem happens quite a bit if you're using multiple things to um, do your analyzing from in the clip uh, separation part. So if we just trim that back there, we're usually going to um, expose that area there um, cleanly without the little artifact and it should sound better. Let's have a listen. Beautiful. So we're, we can do a, a much more detailed beat detective. You're just going to have to be a little bit careful and listen really hard to make sure you don't get any of those issues. It is worth it to go through and actually check all of them. Zoom in a little bit on your waveform and sit there and click through and, and check every single one of these little points. I usually get rid of Beat Detective when I'm doing this particular part. Uh, see, we have another issue there, so we drag that back out. Make sure we have nice, clean transients at the beginning of all of these um, parts. Beautiful. Okay, just a bit later on in this track, we start getting to the point where we start getting snare drums and toms and all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's worth noting here that if we do a quick bit of a Beat Detective on a section like this, um, Let's get back here and make sure this starts right on a transient. Let's get that kick drum and drag it right on. Um, that once we have the snare drum in there, we need to select that to analyze with as well. So let's let's get ourselves four nice bars here. Let's do eight bars. Eight bars and one beat. Let's go back to here. Okay, so. That's where our area is. I'm going to tab up to this point, chop that off there. Um, so we have basically eight bars when I select this little area. That's the way I like working anyhow. What we need to do now, once we've brought up Beat Detective, is not just select the kick, but also select the snare drum. So when we do our analyzing, we're going to have um, the kick and the snare getting recognized. Now, because we had our sensitivity set right up, we need to drag this back down again until we start getting just what we need, which is going to be just the kicks and the snares. So let's zoom out a little bit more here. So we're starting to get some of these artifacts. Now, we've got just, you could say just a little bit too many there. Is, if I get that, that's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Now, Every now and then, you might find you're missing one here like that. And as soon as I go up one notch on the sensitivity, it brings in that, but it brings up these extras. So what I can do, if I like, is hold Option over that one and take it out. So if I do have one that I that that isn't in there that I do want to add in, I can also add that in as well, just by clicking where it should be. So now what I have is a custom-designed little Beat Detective section there. Let's get rid of these little extras that I don't particularly want. And I can finish off that section, go back down, separate, clip conform. Ooh, this comes up. This is a good one to come up. I like it when these problems come up. It's saying it's going to move the clips to a new location because I didn't capture selection. So let's hit capture selection now, hit conform. It's going to keep them in the same part of the song. And now I can uh, do my edit smoothing. So capture selection, very important thing to do. Making sure you check all your edits and at the beginnings of each section so you don't end up with these little um, bits left over. Um, making sure you're very careful with your sensitivity and your analyzing. Choose the close microphones and there's Beat Detective for you. Um, if I miss any little bits out there, I will uh, add them to this later on. Cheers.